Good morning. I'm Gordy Locke. Uh, speaking to you live here from South Harbor Creek United Methodist Church. Thanks for joining me. It is Tuesday, June 7th. We had a special time of worship Sunday. Um, it was really uh, very full of a lot of uh, things that we got to celebrate together. We celebrated Pentecost. Uh, the sanctuary was decorated and even the narthex uh, with red for the flames of fire, the tongues of fire at Pentecost, and got to celebrate that together as a church. We also celebrated those graduating from high school and college. We had several um, young people that are graduating and moving on to the next uh, next part of their life, the next season of their life. Uh, had a wonderful testimony. Clay gave a wonderful testimony of, of uh, cigarette addiction and just how he gave it to God. He had tried several times to quit smoking and was unable to and how he just gave up and said just gave it to God. And it made me think of an old saying many years, <laughs> I guess decades ago now, let go and let God. A lot of things we try to do on our own we try to figure out, we try to solve or um, fix on our own, and we just need to let go. Let go of those things, put them at the foot of the cross, and let God fix it or make it better and help us. And I, it was, what a great testimony. One of these, someone from our church was able to testify how God was able to change your life. So... Talk about Pentecost in Acts chapter 2. That speaks a lot about Pentecost. And the changes that were made there to individuals, to the church, to the body of Christ. I'm going to read Acts 2, 1 through 4. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound of a blowing, like the blowing of a... Violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. What a glorious time that must have been. Later in the New Testament, Paul writes about, again about the moving of the Holy Spirit. In 1 Corinthians 2.9, it's written, However, as it is written, what no eye has seen, what no ear has heard, and what no human mind has conceived, the things God has prepared for those who love him. Amen. We can live such a blessed life as we follow our Lord Jesus Christ. All those things are set before us, all those things that we can't even imagine, things that God's prepared for us, Um, not just in heaven, but in this life, things that we can't imagine, the the blessings, how um, God can help us. God wants to help us. We just would reach out to him. I was inspired watching the graduates. I believe there was like 12, 17. There was quite a few graduates here on Sunday. I was, in, I was inspired to think about them and think of how their life, uh, the new season they're, they've just arrived into, uh, that they need our encouragement. As parents, as members of the church, as friends, as family, as they go through life, and sometimes they just need someone to listen. And I just, uh, once again, I kind of think about way back um, when I graduated from high school, a, a new season. And all of us are going um, through new seasons in life. I know people here that have moved from their homes into other places of residence, some into apartments, some into assisted living. Um, the graduates here, people uh, military, joining the military or getting out of the military, um, new jobs, new areas. My my daughter, thank God, <laughs> sold her house in two days 
in Colorado Springs. She'll be moving to Chattanooga, Tennessee. New seasons all around us. It's a great opportunity for us to encourage them, for us to pray for them and help them along their journey. Uh, a sig significant journey is ending. This is to graduates or anyone changing, um, changing seasons. A significant journey is ending for you. No doubt you were eager to get going on the next one. But go ahead, savor the moment. Such clear rites of passage don't come often in life. And thank God, education is a profound gift. And on behalf of your parents, be gracious with their nostalgia and tears. It's a rite of passage for them too. You're probably receiving a lot of advice, but before you set down, or before you set off down the winding road before you, here are a few travel notes from my own journey. They might, they may help you navigate what lies ahead. The road is hard. Enter by the narrow gate. For the gate is wide and the way is easy that leads to destruction. And those who enter by it are many. For the gate is narrow and the way is hard that leads to life. And those who find it are few. That's Matthew 7, 13 and 14. The road of life is gazing down the road of life you're gazing down is a road to life, but only if you follow the way in John 14, 6. The road is going to get oh, very hard at times. Other roads will look very appealing to you. And when you are weary, discouraged, confused, angry, tempted by some desire or grieving, they will appear much easier. Beware, the path of least resistance is a path of least reward. Jesus goes much further. A path like this leads to destruction. Remember this, a path of least resistance is a path of least reward. Don't tell anyone you, don't let anyone tell you that life is all about the journey. It's not true. The journey is all about the destination. Amen. What matters most is where you end up. You will have to forego many short-term pleasures and refrain from many life experiences in order to reach that which is truly life. And that's found in 1 Timothy 6.19. Go for joy. Be a thoroughgoing Christian hedonist. Seek the greatest treasure which gives the highest pleasure. Even though the road to it is hardest, don't settle for piddly pleasures. If God is your treasure, you'll gain everything. If he's not, you'll lose it all. If God is your treasure, you'll gain everything. If he's not, you'll lose it all. Trust God's promises, not your perceptions. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. Know the Bible. Do not neglect it. Memorize the Bible. Store God's word in your heart. Psalm 119, 11. Daily Bible reading is nothing, has nothing to do with performing ritual for God's approval, but has everything to do with spiritual survival. The Bible will keep you sane because the book tells you what's real. What you perceive with your senses, how you interpret your perceptions, and how your emotions respond are unreliable indicators of reality. They will frequently not tell you the truth. And when they do, their reports will often be faulty because they are based on a very thin slice of reality. They can't tell you the big picture. You need to know what God says is true and stand there. Amen. Life is not all about the journey. The journey is all about the destination. 
Many times it will look like God's promises are not real or will not come true. All those moments, I can't stress enough, don't trust your perceptions. I have learned this lesson over the past several years in many different and at times severe ways. I tell you the truth. Not once have God's promises failed me. But my perceptions have failed me again and again. So live in the Bible and it will keep you live. Pray whatever takes prayers. And I tell you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. Luke eleven nine. Ask God for everything. The world tells you that you are the master of your fate and must fend for yourself. But God wants you to believe that you cannot receive even one thing unless it is given you from heaven. John three twenty seven. And that apart from Jesus you can do nothing. John fifteen five. Jesus invites you to ask, seek, and knock. Take him up on it. And when praying from your own heart, don't be afraid, whatever it takes. God loves those kinds of prayers. He takes them seriously and answers them. You will not always recognize the answers initially because they will come in ways you don't expect. And they will often be harder than you expect. Because of this reality, some people fear praying in this way. Don't be afraid. You will not regret such prayers. Through them, God will reveal himself in ways you never knew before, and you will receive some of the best gifts of this life. Be you. Lord, what about this man? Jesus said to him, If it is my will that he will remain until I come, what is that to you? You follow me. John 21, 21 and 22. Always remember, Jesus wants you to be you. If he wants you to become more sanctified, he wants you to become a more sanctified, excellent you. In 1 Thessalonians 4, 3. But he doesn't want you to be anyone else. You bear God's image in a unique way. You have a unique calling on your life. You will be tempted all along the way to compare yourself with others. Sometimes you will feel the pride of superiority. Sometimes you will feel the pride of inferiority. Inferiority. In all your comparisons, Jesus' word to you will be, What is that to you? You follow me. And at the end of your journey, the status and achievements the world most admires will mean nothing. All that will matter is whether or not you faithfully stewarded what Jesus entrusted to you. I'm going to read that again. All that will matter is whether or not you faithfully stewarded what Jesus entrusted to you. And that is our life. He's given us our life. He created us uniquely. He has a unique calling for us. And those are things we need to to live out, to live that life. Uh, We were given a week of prayer, um, a list of prayer Monday through Sunday um, from the leadership of our church on Sunday for uh, Pastor Keith and Linda, uh, things that we need to pray for them. Today, Tuesday is blessing for the new phase of their marriage. Um, as they transition into retirement, um, things change. Their, their daily habits, their uh, responsibilities. So let's pray today for them on Tuesday for a new phase of their marriage. So with that, let's pray. Lord, I do thank you um, for your, um, your word. Lord, help us to be doers of your word, not just hearers only. Help us to put into practice what you've showed us. Help us to be encouragers to those around us, especially the graduates 
at this time. Help us just to give them uh, the encouragement that, Lord, that you've uh, encouraged us with. This time, I just pray for Pastor Keith and Linda as they transition. I pray for their marriage, Lord, as uh, you've called them. They've been married so many years, and I just pray that as they go through these new seasons of life, Lord, that they would look to you, and, Lord, that you would just help them through this, the transition time, their marriage. Strengthen it, Lord. Um, Help their marriage to be uh, um, a shining light to those around them. Uh, testimony of your love and your grace and your mercy. So I thank you for each and every person listening. Pray your blessings on them. Help us to um, receive your best as we follow you, Jesus. Pray all these things now in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to thank you for joining me. I just pray that you would just have a blessed day and a blessed week.